I know if you checked out any Florida Atlantic games in 2018, and let's be honest, who really did? But nonetheless, let's assume that you did. Or you were watching them in terms of evaluating draft prospects. So a lot of the attention, and understandably and deservedly so, was going to go to their great feature back, Devin Singletary, who's an incredibly productive player. You know, a lot of people very high on him, so on and so forth. He put up big numbers. It's easy to gravitate towards him when talking about your attention out of that Florida Atlantic backfield. But I'm going to tell you something. His backup was a prospect in and of his own self. His backup was a guy that if he played at other places and was given the chance to be a feature back, puts up big numbers himself and probably goes much, much higher in the 2019 draft than he ultimately did. And of course, I'm talking about Kareth White Jr., you know, when I heard the Bears' announcement of this pick in round number seven, I was excited. You can get to a point in the seventh round where even if you pay attention to the draft, and I pay a good amount of attention to the draft, unfortunately 2019 draft, not as much as previous years, but still plenty of attention to it, and people that know more than me that pay even more attention, and this is their life, this is what they do, you know, a lot of times you'll have guys going around number seven like, who? Huh? What? I don't know much about him. But the fact that the Bears got a guy like him in round number seven who has some projectability, who has some ability, has me excited. Because when I watch Kareth White on film, and I think some of you have seen this a little bit in the preseason already, there are plenty of things to like. He's got good initial quickness, and he's got home run speed. You know, when you look at that Bears backfield, Tariq Cohen – is freaking cat quick and elusive and agile, but doesn't have true home run speed. David Montgomery doesn't have true home run speed. Kareth White has more home run speed than either one of those two. So he brings a different element into that Bears backfield. He also, for a guy of his size, he runs with nice purpose and power. He is not just a scat back, not just a guy that has to rely upon uh, a low center of gravity and agility and making you miss in order to make things happen in the running game. He is a guy that you can run up the middle that runs with some purpose, has a little bit of pop to him. He's got good body control and balance to be able to bounce off of an initial tackle attempts and break some tackles. Like you look at him and you see his size profile and you think, hey, role playing type of back, not going to be able to run with a ton of power. He runs with more power than he might be given credit for. He's effective with his initial cuts. He's not truly explosive with them, no. But he's a type of guy that can be effective as a cutter, either on one foot or two with his jump cuts and so forth. And he can make some people miss. He can get defenders off of balance. And what I really like about him for a guy with his size profile is he keeps his legs driving through initial contact which allows him to pick up some additional yardage, which allows him to take some negative plays and turn them into positive plays. And I really like that out of guys, especially when you talk about a back that you took in round number seven. He flashed a little bit of ability to be a threat out of the backfield, which you would assume he would have to be able to show in order to stick on the Bears' 53-man roster. He also provides some upside as a kick returner, which I think, again, you've seen in the preseason. You know, when you look at a guy like him, you take him in this type of slot in the draft, you're looking for a guy that can fill holes and fill roles and maybe provide some versatility and do a couple of different things. Well, Kareth White can absolutely do that. Um, but before I get too carried away with him, there is a reason ultimately they went, I guess, in round number seven, even though I thought that was a little too low for him. He had a relatively small sample size in college, which is a positive in the sense of his body does not have a ton of wear or tear on it. He's pretty fresh, but a relatively small sample size. Sometimes it's easier to flash big playability. Sometimes it is easier to flash what you can do than when you're actually tasked with having to show it on a consistent basis. Like he's always coming into the game fresh, so he's always fresh. He didn't have to worry about it like Devin Singletary, where Singletary is the guy from the first quarter through the fourth quarter and still has to maintain his level of effort and effectiveness. Kareth White could come in for a drive or two, a series or two, and then go back on the sidelines and be fresh. So that could be both a good thing and a negative thing. In this case, you worry about the small sample size and just how effective he could really be. Uh, he was too reliant at times to bounce runs to the outside. Ultimately, he's not the biggest back. 
So how much of a living will he really be able to make running between the tackles? I get that. But there are still times at Florida Atlantic where he could have been a little more physical, a little more effective, and a little more patient and determined to run between the tackles. And at times he flashed a little bit too much desire to bounce runs outside. Now he was able to get away with that in college, and he'll still be able to get away with that some in the NFL. Um, but you'd rather him not be so quick to bounce it outside sometimes because a lot of times that's not going to work. He does, like I have referenced before, lack that true kind of every down back type of size. Um, but you could get by with him as a backup option, that's for sure. Uh, one thing that you look at him as a ball carrier that you'd really like him to be better at is patience and vision. He lacks the patience to set up his blocking. He demonstrated that to me in 2018 on a consistent basis. At times, he's out of control, kind of Tasmanian devilish. He gets the ball, and he's ready to go, which sounds like a cool trait, but a lot of times he'll hit the line too damn hard and too damn fast. Sometimes less is more, and sometimes when you slow down, you can actually speed up. It's like in golf. If you try to kill the ball and you try to swing out of your shoes as hard as you possibly can, your muscles tighten up, and as a result, you put forth more effort and you generate less club head speed. Sometimes in golf, it's about relaxing your muscles and feeling like you slow down and just kind of allowing your body to move freely that actually generates a maximum amount of club head speed. And in this case, I would like to see him slow it down a little bit because you have enough quickness and burst, you know, to be able to change direction, to be able to stop and start quickly. Let that physical trait play out for you. And then you combine that lack of patience with kind of average vision. He could struggle to anticipate and sometimes see the holes. Now, I saw at times on a film where he recognized a hole quickly and reacted to it quickly and was able to get through it quickly. But there were other times it's like with that lack of patience, he sat there and got up to the line too quickly. He didn't see the backside hole developing and then be able to cut to it and get some extra yards. Patience and visions are two patience and vision are two things I really value out of a running back, and they are two things that are not strengths for Kareth White Jr. Again, not a disqualifier, not a deal breaker, just saying it's one of those key things more than the size component, I think, that holds him back from being a potential bell cow type of running back in the NFL. Now, when I look at him, and I look at Kareth White. I had kind of a fourth to fifth round grade at, on him after evaluating him. So in the seventh round, potential steal. I look at him, though, and what he brings to the table, including some different elements on what the Bears have at the running back position, and I am adamant that this guy, and I think some Bears fans will back me up now, having seen him in the preseason, Kareth White Jr. must make this 53-man roster because I'm afraid that if you put him out there on the waiver wire and you put him as part of the last set of roster cuts before – uh, the regular season starts, somebody's going to gobble them up. Somebody's going to gobble them up, and they might gobble them up for the 53-man roster. Don't take, take the chance of him sitting on your practice squad. Don't take the chance of him making it to your practice squad. And the reality is, you know, if you like Mike Davis, cool, I guess that's fine too. But Kareth White is a guy that you can utilize as pass catcher. He's got a different element out of the backfield. He's a guy that you could utilize on special teams in the kick return game. You have enough things that he could bring to the table that you got to find a way to put him on the 53-man roster. You must. You must. I'm serious about this. He has to make this 53-man roster. It's okay for the Bears, as much as they use their running backs in a variety of different ways, especially how they utilize Tariq Cohen and how they're going to utilize David Montgomery. It is okay for them to have Kareth White there. You could carry four tailbacks, four halfbacks, four running backs. I'd be okay with that. And if you had to make the decision between Mike Davis and Kareth White Jr., then I'm going with upside and potential at this point, and I'm going Kareth White Jr. Because initially he might be a number three running back. I mean, he could be your kick returner long term. He's got some decent potential long term as a number two type of running back, providing you some flexibility if you don't want to sit there and pay Tariq Cohen the type of big contract he's probably going to command in a couple of years when he hits free agency. You know, you got two years to find out what White brings to the table. And when you think about the Bears, as much as Bear fans probably can't imagine letting Tariq Cohen walk at this point, 
in a couple of years, the Bears are going to be in a position up against the salary cap where they're going to have to make some of these hard decisions. So when you talk about depth of the team, you know, these are the types of guys that you want to keep, that you want to develop, and you want to see what they can do because they can provide you some long-term financial flexibility where if he can even do some of the things that Tariq Cohen does, maybe not in the same style, but if he can even do some of those things from a productivity standpoint, but come at an eighth or a tenth of the cost, then you have to consider him being the long-term backup to David Montgomery. And in a pinch, maybe he would be a guy that if David Montgomery or Tariq Cohen was hurt, that you could step up and put him in a more prominent role in the backfield and feel good about it. Either way, I think Bears fans would be unanimous in agreeing he is much better than last year's number three running back, Tyquan Mizell. Can we agree he's better than Mizell? Exactly. So seventh round, guy that could do a bunch of different things, gives you some quickness and speed at the position. Yeah, that's a pretty good pick right there. 